All right, man, peace. So now this is going to be another entry into the You Get What You Deserve series. And once again, the dynamic is going to be a quote-unquote sugar daddy and a younger woman. As you can see here, the plaintiff is the younger woman in question. Her name is Angela Robinson. She is a young so-called single mother who needed assistance. That's where the sugar daddy comes in, that being Mr. Craig Williams. You know, this video could also go under the topic of quote-unquote nice guys finish last. It's definitely something for many of you brothers out there to consider, especially many of you younger brothers who might not have much life experience. Please understand that people will treat you according to what you tolerate. They will not treat you well, quote unquote, based off of general principles. The average person is an opportunist and they will try to take what they can from you if you allow it. So all in all, it is very important for you to know where you are in life, to have self-awareness, because when you know where you are in life, then you know what you should expect from yourself and from the people that you deal with. If you don't have self-awareness, you're not going to know what you should expect from yourself. Therefore, you're not going to know what you should expect from those that you allow in your life. That will lead to people taking advantage of you. Anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Plaintiff Angela Robinson dated the defendant despite their 24-year age difference. Angela claims their relationship went south after the defendant caught her cheating. So in other words, their relationship went south when the defendant realized that you guys were not in a real relationship. That's, that's, when it, that's when it went south. Brothers, this is why I make the videos that I make. I cannot stress how important it is for you to understand what your place is in your own life. As well as what your place is in the lives of the people that you allow into your life. Many people willfully allow themselves to be used because... They prefer the delusion more than reality. That's why I make videos demonizing the use of weed. Because weed is a substance that many brothers use to try to strengthen the, del the delusional world that they're creating in their own mind. A man should not be delusional. A man should want to and be ready to deal with reality. Because reality is going to come no matter what, whether you want to deal with it or not. So point being is this, the defendant, Mr. Craig Williams, is way too old to have allowed himself to be put through what he allowed himself to be put through. Once again, you get what you allow and you get what you deserve. Please keep that in mind. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you. And since then, the defendant has refused to return her property. So she's suing. Defendant Craig Williams says he still loves and cares about Angela. In other words, he's still under the spell of quote-unquote being in love. This man is a little too old. He's really a lot too old to have that spirit on him. It's very unfortunate, and she's very, and she's very lucky, as we're going to see in this case. He is a very nice man, quote-unquote. And that is why this, this video could fall under the criteria of nice guys finish last. People will try to get over on you if you let them, in general. If someone comes into your life, if the Most High brings someone into your life that could take advantage of you if they wanted to, but don't, you're extremely blessed and fortunate. Extremely blessed and fortunate. But he can't get past the cheating. Craig claims when he caught Angela with another man, she tried to say he was just a friend. Hey. <laughs> so many of these court cases could, you know, I could file under... The multitude of topics that I have on this channel, because I have another topic section called males and females cannot be friends. They cannot be just friends, I should say. All of these various topics that I cover on this channel, you brothers are going to find are always pertinent. Please do not allow yourself to fall for that male female friend dynamic. Do not allow yourself to subscribe to it. Do not allow yourself to conform to it. If a, if a female is telling you that you're just a friend, Really what she's telling you is that she has something better right now and that you're not really viable as a partner, as a mate, and maybe you never will be. So do not allow someone to marginalize you. Then he caught her cheating a second time. Craig's countersuing for storage fees, child care, and a loan. It's very obvious that 
this older brother here is infatuated with younger women. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Okay, um, we used to date. Damn. This broad missing a tooth? What the hell's going on here? Shit. What type of gap she got in her damn mouth? <laughs> if she smiled, you could see her damn tonsils. Today, I met him in 2015. Um, Why brothers get sprung over these scraggly looking broads, man? This chick look like somebody hitting their mouth with a frying pan. He 24 years older than me. Um, that pension. That's right. Hey. You heard what the bailiff Doyle said? He said she's going for that pension. <laughs> a lot of truth is said in jest. Hey, you had to wait a few years for a pension, man. No, uh, no, I went for no pension. Um, we uh, initially start hanging out. He asked that I want to kick it with him. I said sure. He wanted to uh, like be in a relationship like early on, and I told him no. Let's just be friends. Go with the flow and everything like that. That should have been his first sign that she had a multitude of partners that she had on a carousel. A lot of brothers, they hear, but they don't listen. I'm going to say it again. A lot of brothers hear, but they don't listen. I know that for a fact. Because I say certain things in my videos and sometimes brothers get in the comments and they show me that they may hear a video, but they don't listen. And it happens in other aspects of brothers' lives. That's why I always tell cats... Pay attention to what the woman says, what she does, how she conducts herself. How does she dress? Does how she dress convey that she wants to respect you, not just herself? How does she conduct herself when you guys are out on a quote-unquote date with the wait staff? If you get in the cab with her, how does she treat the cab driver? Things like that. All very important. She's on the phone with her family members. How does she speak to her family members? Because if she's speaking to her family member in a nasty way, that's how she's going to speak to you. Point being is this. This brother was not paying proper attention when she said, let's just be friends right now. Of course, when she says friends, meaning I could use you for money and I'll give you a little coochie in exchange. But that's as far as it's going to go. What does that mean? She has some other dudes on the horizon. But she could use you because you're mentally mature and financially stable. That's how he should have translated it. But he didn't because he was too lustful for some young cooch. So we was hanging out um, like a year later. I told him we could be together. Um, I told him, okay, let's be boyfriend and girlfriend because we was together all this time. You know, we had a good time. Again. Now, do you see that? This man's 55 years old or however old he is, and he's allowing a 20-year-old a, a chick to establish the rules of engagement or 25 years old, 27 years old, however the hell old she is. He's allowing a younger woman to establish the rules of engagement. How is it that you're in your 50s and you're allowing a young female like that to establish the rules of engagement with you? And she states that it took her a year to tell him that she would classify their relationship as quote unquote boyfriend and girlfriend. You know what that means? After a year, she could not find a young dude who, to take her seriously. So she said, you know what? This old dude, he makes sure that my pockets stay fat. He babysits my child. No, I give him some, some coochie every once in a while. He's not terrible in bed. Let me just give him the title for now. How did things go? In our relationship? Mm -hmm. Good. It was good. He took care of me, um, helped me. See that? Helped me with my school and their thing, my daughter. See that? She had a live-in babysitter. She had a live-in sponsor. That's why she said it was good. So things turned sour. He caught me like cheating on him. So things didn't turn sour. Sour is when uh, neither party is no longer respecting each other properly. What happened was that he figured out or he found out that you were fucking around. Which you were doing for the entire time that you guys were together. But he didn't pick up on it because he was thirsty. Once again, brothers, if you're thirsty, go get a glass of water. Um, in, in June. Why'd you do that? Um, I was just, um, I guess like bored. Um. Hey, <laughs> what I tell you, brothers, what are the two main emotions that motivate, that dwell within, that galvanize the modern day woman, particularly the liberal woman, especially the liberal woman? Jealousy and boredom. 
Boredom. Most women in general are not good with monotony. Most of them are not good with monotony. If you find a female who can deal with monotony, that's someone that is showing you that uh, she, is, she is exhibiting a major trait that will precipitate her being taken seriously. That's a major check off that she can deal with monotony, that she's not looking for excitement, that she's not looking for an adventure every damn night. Um, making the wrong decisions. Eh, hey, well, that's common for the young liberal female. They make bad decision after bad decision. They need to be chaperoned. Once again, the liberal woman, the woman in general, does not even start to mature until about the age of 45. I know certain people, maybe, maybe they're new to the channel, they might not like me saying that. Oh, well, it is what it is. So, after that, things went sour. He caught me cheating and everything. The second time? The first. The oh, first. okay, just one. Second. Second. Sec you see that? The old man said second. <laughs> he looked like he should be a mechanic somewhere. A second time also? You caught your second time? He talking about something else. Pardon? He's talking about another incident. Right, well that's what he asked you about. Once again, brothers. <laughs> you see how the modern day liberal females will try to omit certain aspects of reality? Why is that? Because those act as triggers that will tell her that the delusional world that she's created within her own mind it's not real it's like the movie inception when when the subject was being woken up from their dream that dream world will start to will, will start to literally collapse around everyone who was in it that's what you do that's what you do but you don't want to start it down that course of right. uh right testimony so he thought he'd add on and I thought I'd get some clarification but we can go um, somewhere else with the uh, testimony and that is the problems you all had that caused you to break up what happened okay so yeah I ended up being with somebody else That's he what found problem. out um, and then since then we've been into it because he won't he won't return my stuff and we kind of uh, we been we try to work it out and it just didn't work okay like, so in other words, you were using him for what he had because he was an older man. He had his shit together. The older man was delusional enough to believe that you would be interested in him in a loving way, which is almost impossible in this society for a 55-year-old man or 50-year-old man, however old he is, to come across a female in her mid-20s and actually establish a relationship that's going to be long-lasting or anything of real substance. It's almost impossible. It's highly improbable that... Two people in this society of of near age are going to meet and establish a relationship that is long lasting and substantive. So he came into the situation dealing in a in you no know, dealing with a delusional uh, a delusional form of 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 understanding, a very poor outlook on what the relationship was going to be about. So he precipitated his own you know, his own downfall per se. Let me uh, allow him to give some background on it, sir. First of all, I still love her and still care about her. In other words, you're still simping. But, far as the cheating thing... She didn't cheat on you, bro. She never took you seriously. She didn't cheat on you. She just kept doing what she was doing the whole time. After a while, when she couldn't find a man her age who was financially stable or and would take her seriously... She just gave you a title to shut you up. That's all it was about, man. I caught her like red-handed. And I was cheating or whatever. And, oh, okay, one day that she came over the house and um, she washed all her clothes and everything. Yeah, I wonder why she had to wash her clothes. It was probably sticking together. <laughs> and then the next morning I dropped her off to school. And after I dropped her off to school... Did she have on the Catholic school uniform that you bought her? <laughs> I haven't heard from her none that day. So I'm calling over and over and over and over and over. Why? Uh, see what happened to her. So she did. has a timeline to get back from school? Right. How much time? Well, I usually would pick her up like 3.30 or something like that. I know. So and... And didn't take her home, but she, she said, oh, no, I'm catching the bus. I'm all right. I'm catching the bus. No, she wasn't catching the bus, brother. She was catching the train. <laughs> she was catching a train that was getting ran on her. 
So when I oh, okay, see, bro, it's strange that suddenly you want to take the bus or right. Okay. And I called her and called her all that day, didn't get no answer. The next day I called her and called her. So I um, decided I'm gonna drive over there to the, her sister's house and see what's going on. I had her. She left all her clothes inside my car and everything. So I went over there to take out her clothes, and she's. I woke up and she's sitting on another man's lap, straddling. And how did you see that? I walked. She was sitting on the porch. I didn't open. What does that tell you, brother? What should that tell you that she's not even hiding the fact that she's dealing with other dudes? She clearly was not even thinking about you coming to her, what her sister's house, to come drop off her clothes. She had no regard for you. She did not answer your calls. She was out doing her. So that means all the way that day. I mean, shit. Did the broad even go to school? She probably just had you drop her off at school. Then went straight to this next dude house. Spent the whole day getting a damn back blown out. And then you coming like a jackass to drop her clothes off. Went, hey, baby, you forgot these. She, she said, no, I didn't. I, I, I had some clothes at this dude house. And I told her, I said, well, you know, um, I, we, we simply talked about this the night before that all of this, you know, not, I don't want to hear, you know, you messing around with nobody after you messing around with anybody. I'm through messing around because I don't want to be bothered with no more. Yes, you do. You want to be bothered with it because you're in love. You're a sucker for love, brother. Let's, let's just knock it off. She can look at you right now and say, honey, I want to make up. And you're going to say, okay, let's drop the court case, baby. I turned around here looking to see that she was sitting on the guy's lap. Then I said, who was this? She said, oh, this is my friend. Friend. <laughs> this is my friend. His name is Dick. <laughs> Friends that have benefits. Uh, and she didn't say that, obviously, but that's your <laughs> son. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. After. And was that really her friend? Might just be some random dude she just met that day. After that. I said that stuff was in my storage. I said, well, it looked like you're going to have to pay me for my storage. It was to turn right here and have me running around doing everything for you and your child. No, uh, no, sir. No, sir. You agreed to do everything for her and her child. You willingly did so because you're a simp. That's why. You're a simp. You didn't pay attention from the very start when she said, let's take it slow. What she really meant by that when you attempted to start the relationship was that she was keeping her options open. That's all that meant. Out and everything, and you, you out cheating, and like. She ain't cheating. You can only cheat on a test. <laughs> she wasn't cheating on you. You guys were never serious. You were only serious in your own mind. She told you that she was going to consider you a boyfriend to appease you and keep your mouth shut. You were a good babysitter, for both her and her child. Few nights before we laid in the bed, she said, "Oh no, I'm not gonna never cheat on you or whatever." And I catch it. Yeah, the night before she'd say, "I'm not, I'm never gonna cheat on you." <laughs> Meanwhile, in her right hand, she got her cell phone micro cheating. And then she's about a few weeks ago, she went to rekindle with this here, and then turn around here. Two days ago, she called me and said, "I could never talk to you ever again." All over again. I'm like, so what does that tell you? That she's playing games with you like that, like you're 25 years old, bro. That should tell you that it's not a her thing. It's a, it's a you thing. It's a you issue. You have a problem where a 24, 25-year-old girl understands that she could play with your mind like that. I'm like, ah. Did she say what? Because the other boy, he was in the background. How do you know? Because I heard it. his voice. You could hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other dude was in the background. Cut that old nigga off. I want this pussy all to myself, at least for the next week or so. Then I'm going to dump your ass and send you back to him. Uh -huh. Bet money that the young dude told her to call the old dude and cut him off just to see if she would do it. And her dumb ass fell for it. Now she's out of sponsor. That happened two days ago? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And had you intended to break up with him and just didn't know how to tell him and so you felt that you were going to find an easy way out by yeah. letting him catch you? Uh, no, that it ain't. Because you got to be slicker than that. That's my she wasn't trying to be slick. She just, she's just an idiot. She wasn't thinking that far because she never took him seriously. Had she taken him seriously, she actually would have put thought into cheating, quote unquote. 
Once again, it really wasn't cheating because she never considered him shit. <laughs> she didn't say to herself, oh, let's go to a hotel. She said, let's go right outside on my front porch, my sister's front porch, and do our thing. Had he, had he pulled up 15 minutes later, they probably would have actually been having sex on the front porch. That tells you what, not only is she, quote unquote, scandalous, the sister's scandalous because the sister knew about the whole damn thing. That's my point. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. No, it, women are usually a lot slicker than the man in cheating. Oh, all these women are gonna get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Some women do cheat, and those women, usually, from my observation, understanding, discussions with other men, discussions with other women, they say they're slicker. It's not that they slicker; it's that men do not like to argue as much as females. So the man will suspect that the woman is doing something, but he just won't pursue it. Like the woman will pursue it because the woman likes verbal confrontation, verbal altercation. They like provocation. Most men, they, most men sense when or if a female is doing something where she's uh, utilizing some form of skullduggery or conniving. But he just doesn't want to be bothered with making an accusation that he cannot you know, substantiate. So he leaves it alone. Unless the woman feel like she's getting away with something. After a while, if the man is smart enough, he'll just confront her and say, you know what, it's not working out. Go on about your business. The woman wants to go through people's phones and all that other shit. The, the man doesn't want to be bothered with that. No. But it is what it is. The man get caught all the time. That is a man who has a man's nature. You know, now you have some dudes who have you know, feminine energy on them and they like to argue and all that other shit. But all the time. Women never get caught. Except for you. <laughs> Caught twice. Go ahead, ma'am. Tell me what she you're showing them about. She does a lot of lying. She lies. She lies the day she admits, sir. She's always very honest. She now, one person she lied to is herself. She lied to herself, and that made it very easy for her to lie to you because she saw that you was a damn simp. She lied on a lot of things. She lied. More of Judge Mathis in a moment. As you can see. This brother here, the older brother, he's very, very pathetic. It's a sad case because you can see that he's a nice person, quote unquote. He's a nice person. Um, but he needs to accept the fact that he needs to find a female more his age. Because he's not going to find a female in her 20s that's going to take him seriously. Nothing against him, but he, he just doesn't fit the criteria of an older man that a woman would take seriously. He needs to find you know, some chick, 48, 49, 50 something years old. And try to settle down with her, you know, go walk on the beach or some shit. He out here trying to keep up with this broad, and, and she talking about she going to the store, and she's, you know, she really going to, to suck some dude off. Who the hell knows? Go ahead, ma'am. I guess it was April of this of last year. He offered to, he got a storage. He offered to put some of my stuff in it because he know uh, I live somewhere. It's a tight space, so he offered to put some of my stuff in storage. I agree. No, you asked me. Could you? No, you offered because you said you had a. finish. Go ahead. He, he offered. He offered. He had got a new storage from himself, and he offered to put my stuff in there. So I told him, yeah. He came, picked up my boxes and stuff, a couple of things, and so it was sitting in there since April. And then when we got into it, with, with the breakup and that thing, he he told me he wasn't gonna give it to me unless I pay him and all of this, and he was gonna throw it in the garbage. And I just haven't gotten. All right, let's hear from you, sir. Well, by me um, holding this stuff, I said that I said all this his stuff for you cheating and whatever. I said that you're gonna pay me for taking care of your child. You're gonna pay me for you're gonna pay me for the storage, and and you also owe me five hundred dollars. So this dude basically he's looking for some simp collateral. <laughs> See, brothers, this is what happens when you're a simp. All a simp is, is a male who puts a female on a pedestal like a god. He worshipped this young female. This is why he was unable to see the forest through the trees. She was telling him blatantly the whole time that she was dealing with other men. She was telling him this through her actions, but he chose to listen to her words. It's why I opened the video trying to inform you brothers about opportunists. And how you very rarely come across people in life that are going to do right by you just based off of general principles. Most people are going to listen to 
the baser aspects of themselves, particularly if they're in a dire situation and they need someone to siphon off of. This brother was what she needed. She needed someone to siphon off of. She still does. She still does. Because to be quite frank with you, it's very obvious that the plaintiff is a fuck up. I doubt if she's going to if she's going to finish school unless they just help her out finishing school because she does not seem very mentally focused. And she is going to crawl back to him sooner or later. It's only going to be a matter of whether or not he finally grows a backbone. But at that age, if he still doesn't have one, I doubt if he'll ever get one. He'll just throw a tantrum. What she has to be careful of is, is simps sometimes become abusive. Sometimes they become homicidal. She turned around here. She gave me. She turned around here a couple of weeks ago. She gave me eighty dollars. That was it. Okay. He said that she gave him eighty dollars, and that was it. Now, bet money the eighty dollars that he alleges she gave him was in cash. Once he realized that he wanted to make this a a financial issue, he should have stipulated to her that you're either gonna have to give me a check or money order. But once again, because he's quote unquote in love, he's not thinking clearly. He's thinking purely with his emotions. And that is why I state that nice guy persona, that nice guy persona does not get you anywhere in life. You have to be respectful. You're respectful towards yourself and towards everyone else. And that is going to establish a proper protocol for how you deal with people and how you allow them to deal with you. All that nice guy shit is for the birds. That's not how you're going to be able to be fruitful in life now look at this broad face she, she looks like a little kid <laughs> she's, like, she's like what's big daddy talking about okay and you think it's legal for you to withhold her uh, items and i told her i told her two months ago that i was gonna give all the stuff to her she said oh my mother's storage ain't open yet and when my mother's storage get open then i'll I'll come for my stuff. Is that true? No. Well, if he told her that he's going to give her all the stuff, then that means that he does not really have a legal recourse to demand payment. No, not no. Not, not really. Entirely you don't true. say. What do you mean? Not, not entirely really. true. What was the discussion regarding coming to get your things? Yes, he said he was going because I needed my suitcase. Uh huh. He said I'll give you all your stuff if you want me to. I'll keep it here in my storage if you need me to keep it. Yeah, the suitcase probably has all her all her Victoria's Secret lingerie that she needs to get to for all the young dudes that's piping her down. <laughs> I said, well, could you keep it for a couple of more weeks until I'll be able to make space? The, the, the suitcase has all the lingerie. It also got that false tooth that she puts in the front of her mouth when she's trying to meet a new man. He agreed. He got my suitcase after storage. So he offered to continue to keep it. Only reason I didn't take it... It's because I didn't have space at the moment, but he he did he okay. did he offered. Okay. I mean, shit, this can also fall into the into the hood rat series as well, brothers, man. You, you you have to be very meticulous when you're out here dealing with these broads, man. And you have to be very meticulous with yourself. You have to do an inventory on your own sanity and make sure everything is there, everything is where it is supposed to be, because if not, you're gonna end up playing yourself, man. Once again, this chick is not even really playing this dude. He's playing himself. 50 something years old and you and you don't understand what's going on okay. well how can you sue the man if he offered to give you your things because he took it back he recanted his statement and it's very obvious that he recanted his statement statement sir did you change um, your mind again and no what well, i in a way i said but in a way i didn't <laughs> and she hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on judge hold on judge she came um, I told her, I said... Even Judge Mathis is looking at this dude like, man, you are pitiful. I said, oh, I should throw all this stuff in the garbage. And turned around here. She came over, her and her niece. The suitcase was sitting right there in the garage by the dresser. And she said, where's my suitcase? I said, I ain't got it. I didn't want to put it back in the storage. Oh, so you put it back in the storage. Took all my stuff inside the garage, started throwing stuff everywhere. Well, that's what happens when you play games with little kids, dude. That's what happens. If you had the suitcase right there, you should have just gave it to her. Why are you going to start playing games when she came by the crib? You know that she wants something that's in there. She took rubbing alcohol and started throwing rubbing alcohol on me. Her niece turned around here and spraying mace all in my face. 
you're lucky that after they threw the rubber alcohol on you, that they didn't light a damn match. Okay? When you're dealing with hood rats, you never know what the hell they're going to do. As soon as he started talking about rubbing alcohol, I said, wow, imagine if they lit a match on his ass. And they wouldn't have gave a damn. Because when it comes to, you know, when it comes to, to property and, um, and, and you know, material items, these chicks don't give a damn when they want their shit. <laughs> a lot of dudes don't give a damn when they want. That's why you have to be very careful when you're playing games with people's goods. You're either going to give it to them or you're not. And if you're going to make it a financial issue, then you drop a contract. And I pressed charges. I pressed charges and everything. But I happened when then after that, then they called me. Judge Mathis called me. And then I said, well, I'll go through this here before I completely depress the complete charges. Okay. Your counterclaim, storage fees, child care, and unpaid loan. Okay. How does your- he looked like a nigga who could snap, too. She better watch herself. They do look like the type of you know what, you little bitch, I've played enough games with you. I'm going to get my axe. How does she owe you for that? Um, she has her stuff in my storage for over a year. Um, How much was the agreement to pay? It wasn't an agreement. All right, so... See that? No agreement. You see how sheepishly he said that? There wasn't an agreement. Because he knows he's asked out. No agreement means no proof. Oh, child care. How does she owe you for child care? Um, it wasn't an agreement to pay, but I took care of her daughter for three months. Of course, because you were a caretaker. You were a caretaker for her and for her child. That's what she saw you as. All the young niggas that was running trains on her, they wasn't going to take care of her child. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them dudes probably could barely take care of their damn self. They wouldn't try to take care of her child. Basically, she saw you coming. After a year, she was, she was able to scout you out and figure out that you wanted her bad enough that you, were, that you were ready to take care of her and her child. She could use you as a babysitter while she went out and got piped down. Once again, uh, you know, this is a cautionary tale. Not just for brothers, but you know, also for the airheaded young females who might think about doing this. Because every man is not going to be as magnanimous as this dude right here. A lot of these guys out here are you know, a hop, skip, and a jump away from snapping. Take care of her house. Uh, while she was in school, I would take her daughter and I would keep her daughter all, all day while she in school. And look at that. The plaintiff is ready to leave her daughter with this man. You're going to leave your daughter with this man, which means that you have a tremendous amount of trust for him. But even then, um, I mean, shit. There's a lot that a person has to do for you to trust them with your child. So clearly... The daughter is not truly a priority of the plaintiff, in my view. You're retired, obviously. Or you uh, work nights? No, I'm, I'm at home on uh, disability. Okay. And loan, how does she owe you for that? What loan? Well, me loaning her money, loaning the money, and loaning the money, and then she's turning around here and say, Oh, I'm going to pay you now. It's take her so long not to pay. And I turn myself say, Oh, forget it. And so whatever. she agreed to repay you? Yes. And then you I just said, Uh oh, you said forget it. <laughs> Right, I did. I said, did say that. I yeah, because you were desperate to get it back. And I'm not convinced it's a loan. I'm convinced that you gave her the money. Especially if you can't prove it. Because everything that you have conveyed about yourself thus far is that you're an extreme pushover. That you, you do not have a backbone. And that you'll do anything to maintain a relationship with that female. Unfortunately for Mr. Craig Williams... Uh, he most likely was not taught much about the nature of the woman or the nature of the man. These are things that he needed to be taught to avoid situations like this. Because the plaintiff is just going to perpetually use him until she finally finds a young man who has many of the benefits that Mr. Craig Williams is currently providing for her. I did say that at one time, I did. Uh, and, you can't change okay. your mind and as much as you do. Well, I, would, I said I was in a way, and in a way I wasn't. <laughs> okay, well, now it's well, I said I was, but now I say I'm well, not. When she turned All those things are indicative of an emission of feminine energy. Even Judge Mathis is noticing that uh, this man here, this male here, uh, has an inability to understand what he should be thinking. That's why he's not making clear decisions because he doesn't know what he's supposed to be thinking. He told me that 
we was getting back together and I was uh, like an idiot. Oh. He turned around here and said, no, I ain't gonna, uh, I ain't gonna bother you for it or whatever. And that Look at her face. Yes, Big Daddy. If you take me back, I'll drop the cage right now. Just give me my stuff. And uh, just drive me over to my next nigga house. <laughs> Look at Mathis. Mathis like, mm, mm, mm. Back 40 years ago, I have you out on a stroll. <laughs> you, you run game better than me. And that's what it happened. Okay. And then she turned around here and still cheated on me again. All right, so, sir. you know. <laughs> this dude, always, she cheated on me again, Yana. For, for the 38th time, she cheated on me. I can't believe it. When's this dude gonna realize she has never cheated on you one time in, in your quote unquote relationship because in her mind, y'all were never in a relationship. I mean, no disrespect, people might not like this, but the plaintiff is the type of female who wants a man to whoop her ass. That's when in her mind, she'll feel like she's in a relationship when she has a man who whoop her ass. That's just the vibe that I get from her. That's the psychological profile that I get from her and her conduct. Person like Craig Williams, a so-called nice guy, she gonna, she gonna walk all over him like one of those masseuses. <laughs> those masseuses that's the, that walk all up and down your back. That's how she gonna walk all over this fool. And all I right. said, uh, after the day is, it's completely over. All right, completely. All right, sir. Um, uh, yeah, Mathers. All right, sir. Sir, <laughs> like you softer than cotton balls. Just stop it, sir. As soon as the case is over, you're gonna be on your hands and knees begging to get her back. I'm not suggesting that this is your status or has ever been your status, but if it has been, I think you need a better understanding of the concept of what you're doing. You, uh -huh. You're a sugar daddy. <laughs> and Thank you, sir. Did you see how gently Judge Mathis tried to break it to Craig? Because he sees that Craig is um, he's a bit slow. And maybe not so much because of lack of intellect, but just because he's, he's made himself too emotionally vulnerable to this young chick. See, had Craig Williams been an asshole, Mathis would have broken the news to him in a far more confrontational way. He would have said, sir, you don't know what she's, been, what she's playing you for? How dumb are you? Like, he would have been much more brusque about it. But he's picking up that same energy like I am that Craig is just a, a quote-unquote nice guy. So, hopefully he learns, but I doubt it. And sugar daddies... You know, uh, no, they I'm... don't get loyalty oh, a lot of times. <laughs> Mathis is trying to be really nice towards Mr. Uh, Mr. Craig Williams. That's why I look at the chick. Look at the plaintiff. She's smiling. She had to put her head down. Because she's like, what are you doing, Judge Mathis? I got a good thing going here. I got a good scam I'm running right here. I'm giving this old fool some pussy once a month, and he's paying all my bills and taking care of my child. Meanwhile, I'm going... Every Friday and Saturday to my man house, to my real man house, and get my back blown out. Then I got my side dude that I go to on, you know, during the weekdays. Neither one, of, neither one of them know about that. Just Mathis, will you shut the hell up? <laughs> From the young ladies. These young ladies are more motivated by your money and whatever else you have to offer. But I would, said, they I wouldn't, are. I wouldn't have sugar daddy. <laughs> well, a man who takes a lot of care and invests a lot of finances into a woman that's less than half his age. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, well you, you huh? get, uh, whatever y'all say. Y'all call this shit again. You get hurt <laughs> next time, say what? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't agree, Yana. I think that there was real love there. I, I love her and she loves me. And uh, I don't appreciate this right now. <laughs> Look at her face. Look at this bitch face, man. This shit look like one of the little rascals. Hey, well, yeah, that's I know what the, happens. I know the concept. He don't of sneak a around because game. that's how it goes. I know that's that's what this is. So I'm gonna let her sneak around. And sir, that that's come on, man. I don't know what this is. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. But Mathis is very disappointed by him because he's too old to be falling for a lot of these games, man. These little silly hijinks that this broad is pulling on him. Like, come on. Uh, this is why I tell brothers every every situation that you have in this society is a you know is, is a commercial situation it's a commercial transaction it's all about how much you're getting out of something based off of what you're putting into it if you're putting more into something that you're, than you're getting out of it you have to find a way to change that dynamic or change that situation leave it alone i guarantee you mr craig williams was putting far more into their quote-unquote relationship than he was getting out of it I promise you, he wouldn't get in that ass more than once a 
a month, maybe, maybe twice a month. Other than that, she was telling him, oh, I'm at school. I got to study. I'm running late. I got to go to my friend's house. She's having a birthday party. Oh, my mom needs me. I guarantee you she was getting she, he was getting all those excuses while he's sitting at home with his old wrinkly penis in his <laughs> in his hand. So, you know, thinking to himself, where's my girl at? There was no agreement for storage fees, child care, and you waived the loan. Uh, as such, I can't grant you anything. However, you admitted today that you withheld her property, and so I must grant her her judgment. You said in the way I did, in the way I didn't. <laughs> yeah, well. So I gotta go in the way you did. <laughs> See, Judge Mathis wanted to grant him the judgment. He wanted to grant it to the defendant because he felt sorry for him, but he couldn't. Because the dude was so sloppy that um, it would have been literally against the law to grant the defendant any form of judgment. But once again, brothers, please understand what you're dealing with. <laughs> and also understand that you get what you deserve, or the defendant got what he deserved. Judgment for the plaintiff, sir. Your plaintiff is getting it. Good luck, sir. Look at her face. She's looking at him still like, oh my goodness, my sugar daddy mad at me. I got to find a way to get back in his good graces. I guess I got to give him his quarterly pussy. <laughs> Four months have passed, or three months have passed. I'll give him some pussy. I just want to say I'm glad about the judgment. And um, he wasn't no sugar daddy, but... Yeah, right. She's saying that now because she's hoping that they can, you know, rekindle something. Because the young dudes that have been blowing her back out, they, they're not returning her text messages. So she's just happy she can get her stuff back. Hopefully they can return back to the dynamic they had before where he watches her child while she goes out to the party and she gives him some ass every once in a while. He gonna fall for it too. I never was a sugar daddy. I just, you know, I'm a kind-hearted person that take care of a person, you know, treat them right. I'm I know, brother, you're a kind-hearted person that treat people right. But you know what's an unfortunate aspect of life? You can only treat people right who deserve it. You can't treat everybody right. It's unfortunate. Uh, it's, it's too bad it's not the case that you can treat everybody right. But after a certain amount of data, then you understand that you have to treat people according to their conduct. And if you don't, it encourages them to continue to be morally decrepit. So, uh, you may not understand this, but people like you are actually the problem. You're not the solution. You can't be good to everyone. Uh, what you can do is treat, treat everyone according to their conduct. That's how you get people to correct themselves, when they get treated according to their conduct. So, once again, that's why being a so-called nice guy is not beneficial for anyone. Um, I, I don't, to be quite frank with you, I don't even know what that term nice means. You, you treat people respectfully according to their conduct. All that nice stuff that, I mean, there's such a thing as pleasantries. But after you have been able to ascertain what type of person you're dealing with, from there, everything is about how they conduct themselves towards you. I'm finna go and get her stuff and give her all her stuff and I'm, um, and, um, change my telephone number and I'm be bothered with her no more. Oh man, you ain't changing shit. Just knock it off. You're gonna be texting her. I guarantee you, as soon as they leave the set, she's gonna be texting him. You, so you're really still mad at me like that? You're gonna change your number? And he's gonna say, yeah, I'm, I'm mad. I know. Give me 24 hours to think about it. <laughs> oh. But anyway, that is uh, volume two on You Get What You Deserve. And please, brothers, keep that in mind. In life, you get what you deserve, particularly if you're in a willful situation. We go through things in life sometimes that we can't control. That's a whole different scenario. But in a rapport like this, where you get to know a person or where you should be getting to know a person and watching their moves, after you know, in the aftermath of whatever befalls you, you got what you deserve. But anyway, peace.